this is coral. I'm sure you've all heard of coral, and I'm sure you've all heard the little fact that coral isn't actually a plant, it's an animal. But did you know that coral is actually really closely related to jellyfish and even anemones? In fact, they're all part of a phyla known as the Cnidarians. Uh, and they're all actually very similar when you look at them really closely. This video is going to focus on anemones because um, for me they're actually just a lot easier to film. Um, I don't really have the capabilities to go looking for jellyfish uh, and the corals that we have here are not exactly the most um, photogenic. Contrary to popular belief, or well, I know I used to think this, Jellyfish, anemones, corals, they're not really tropical at all. In fact, you can find them all the way at the North Pole uh, or Hawaii or wherever you are in the world. In fact, all the footage that I've shot in this video is shot in Wales, so, you know, it's not exactly the most tropical place in the world. So, what about those Nidarians? Well, Nidarians are generally quite easy to identify because they've got two pretty distinct body shapes that they tend to come in, polyps and medusas. Most, if not all, Nidarians will experience both a polyp and medusa body part at some point in their life cycle, although it does depend on how they reproduce. For example, anemones can reproduce by binary fission, which essentially is where they split into two new anemones, rather than being just one anemone. However, here in this diagram of a jellyfish life cycle, you can see that the jellyfish in some of its earlier stages forms a polyp body plan where it matures and grows for a while, and when it's ready, it releases itself as a medusa back into the, into the ocean and then continues its life on as an adult jellyfish. Nematocysts, or the stinging cells that Nidarians often have, are what we refer to as the taxon-defining feature of Nidarians, which essentially means that Nidarians are the only ones that have these. So, if you find a new animal and you're trying to figure out where in the final genetic tree of life it fits, and it happens to have nematocysts, well, it's probably a Nidarian. Nematocysts aren't technically cells, but it's much easier to just refer to them as stinging cells, so I'm going to refer to them as that from here on out. Essentially, a nematocyst is a, is a barb that's coiled up like a spring, ready to be released upon whatever it is that touches it. Nematocysts use up quite a lot of energy in the animals that have them, because not only are they quite costly to make in the first place, but every time a nematocyst is used, it completely disintegrates because it's useless. So it has to make, the animal has to make new nematocysts to replace the old ones that have already been used up. For those reasons, the, the firing itself is quite well regulated by different thresholds of, of pressure and uh, chemical stimuli. So some nidarians will have uh, nematocysts that can be activated quite easily, while others may not. The one thing most people think of when they hear about jellyfish is the stings. And yes, some Nidarians have uh, nematocysts that can inflict some pretty horrific injuries. Jellyfish aren't the only ones that can sting. Obviously, all Nidarians can have these nematocysts, so anemones and corals and even other members of the Nidarian family, who we'll get to in a minute, can also sting not just people, but uh, other prey and uh, predators that they might encounter in natural environments. I'm sure you've all heard of clownfish and the the relationship that they have with the anemones that they live in. These anemones have nematocysts on them that don't activate when the clownfish swim into them. Meanwhile, the main source of food for the clownfish is small organisms that might actually feed themselves on the sea anemone. Therefore, this relationship is what we call symbiotic. Both organisms benefit. Generally speaking, every phyla describes a huge array of diverse organisms, and Nidaria isn't any different. For example, all of these animals that you see on screen all fit within Nidaria. In fact, most of these animals are colonial hydrozoa, which you may have seen in images like this that were circulating around recently as the longest animal ever, or these strange tube-like animals that are sometimes found. Within hydrozoa, you've got the order Siphonophore, which contains a number of equally incredible animals, but some of these just happen to be my favourites. I think that these are some of the most weird alien-looking animals that you find, but they're not limited to the depths of the ocean. That's 
quite a lot of these hydras that are found all over the place. These Portuguese Man of War, for example, are a colonial hydrozoa that you've probably seen, and you may have also heard the fact that they're not technically jellyfish, but they're closely related. That's because they are in fact hydrozoan. And even though they do look like one single animal, they're actually a colony of little tiny polyps that all work together to form a function in the same way that a, almost like a small town or city works. Again, much like most other Nidaria, most Hydrozoa will experience both polyp and medusa body forms through their life cycle, although most medusa individuals tend to be reproductive and generally not particularly common. But the majority of Hydrozoa are polyps. Quite a lot of these unique looking animals are what inspired me partly to go into marine biology and the idea that I could learn not only what they really are and how they work, but also maybe even see them myself in the wild and work with them as a scientist. So normally, it, here is where I would end the video, but because this is the first video on this channel, I wanted to give a little bit of background about who I am and what I want to do with this channel. Uh, but you probably won't hear from me like this again very much, unless something changes. So I'm Miles, and I'm a marine biology student based in Bangor in Wales. Uh, I've worked in aquariums, I've done a couple of internships at uni, and the point of this channel really is to fill a gap that I noticed when I was preparing to come to uni myself, which is, well, the problem that I had was that whenever I went to YouTube or Google to look at things that I may want to learn, it was really difficult to find anything that wasn't aimed either at very young children or experts who already knew what they were talking about and there's this sort of middle level of, of information that's really hard to get at if you're not already a student at university and this stuff's really interesting and I know that a few years ago it would have been really in interesting to me personally to have learnt all of this so I think it'd be great to have these sort of educational videos out there so that people who are in my position and maybe want to look at some of the basic things with the definitely beyond the very young children level of, of biology but you know still interesting and I hope easy to follow that's what I'm hoping to do with this YouTube channel um, I'll stop talking now <laughs> um, I'm definitely gonna be making more videos and hopefully a few different types of videos as well um, but we'll see how that all goes um, if you wanted to see more definitely you know subscribe leave me a comment let me know if you've got any questions or suggestions on how I can make this better and make it maybe easier to understand or or bits of information that you'd like to see in future videos so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one